Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to use Xcode for developing with C++. Now first of all you need to have Xcode and I have a separate video on finding and installing Xcode but basically you just go to the App Store, search for Xcode, install it, and once it's installed you can open it and you're presented with this welcome screen. And to begin with, we're going to click Create a New Xcode Project. And then from here, you want to make sure that you have the OS X option selected with Application underneath of it. And from those template options, we're going to choose Command Line Tool. And then click Next. Now, it's asking you for a product name. So this is basically going to be the name of your project. So I'm just going to start with um, Hello World. Organization name is your name or your company's name. And then you have a company identifier, which is usually like a domain name in reverse. And in this case, Xcode is assuming or thinking that down the line, this is something that you're going to produce for actual sales and publication. So it creates a bundle identifier, which is a unique identifier that combines the company ID with your product name. So if you're just doing this for test purposes, it really doesn't make any difference what you put in for organization and company identifier. Now you want to make sure that the type is set to C++. There are other options in here, but for developing with C++, we want to make sure that that is specifically selected and we can make sure to uncheck automatic reference counting. I'm going to click Next and it's going to ask me where I want to save my files and I'm just going to put it on my desktop so I can show that to you easily. So once it's created the project this is what your screen looks like and we have the project information over in here and really for just building some C++ test applications, uh, this really isn't anything that you need to worry about at this point. What we're really interested in is the main CPP file. So under your project folder name, you have a main CPP. And when you click on that, if you single click, this window pane over here will change to show that to you. If you double click, then it opens up that file into a separate window. So you end up with it in both places. So if you do that, you can just close the second window. So what we have is a pre-built C++ program with standard Hello World when you're creating a new application. So we'll start by just running this to see what it looks like when we run it. So in the top left corner is the Run button. So I'm going to press that. You can see up here that it builds and links and compiles everything and we have an output window that opens up at the bottom of the screen and if you have more area you know this does expand out and if you have a lot of content in here you are able to scroll up and down actually each of these panels are sizable by clicking and dragging in between this panel over to the side is the utility panel and for the most part right now we don't need it so if you want more screen space here we can close the utility panel. So now we have a running application and I just want to show you what warnings and errors look like in Xcode. So first of all a warning message. If I take one of these less than symbols and remove it then what happens is I get this warning symbol and if I click on the warning symbol it gives me a message here and it is kind of cryptic, but it says it's looking for a comparison against a string literal. In other words, it's trying to compare C out to the string hello world, which logically just doesn't make any sense in this context. Now, if I run this, I don't get any errors in running it, and it also says build succeeded, but then I don't see any results because it can't process this. So I'm going to put this back in. And let's see what an error looks like. A common error is forgetting to put a semicolon at the end of a statement. So I'm going to remove that. 
and in a few seconds it pops up with an error symbol and it also shows up here at the top that there's an error. This number will tell you how many there are. Sometimes you have quite a few and sometimes you only have one. So if you want to see what this error is, I can just click on this little symbol and it gives me a longer, a little bit more information and this recognizes that it's missing the semicolon and so it even is suggesting a way to fix it. So if I wanted to take this suggestion I can just double click on the fix and it corrects it and the error symbols disappear. So let me remove this and we'll see what this looks like when we try to run it with an error. So if I hit run, build failed and again I get the same error message that pops up. We can see up here it also said the build failed and we have one error. So if I put my semicolon back in these error messages disappear but failed still shows up. This is showing what happened the last time it was run. So now if I run this again then that disappears and we see our output. Now when we created this project, it created a folder and I specified to put it on my desktop for Hello World. So let me show you what, that, what those files look like. So on my desktop, I have a Hello World folder. And inside that folder, I have a Hello World.xcode proj file. So if I wanted to open this back up into Xcode, if it wasn't already open, I could double click this and it would just open up the entire project in Xcode. Now inside this Hello World folder, these items go together, right? They're all encompassed inside this single folder, so they belong together. Now if I look under the Hello World folder, we can see that we have the Hello World 1 file, which was created as part of the Xcode project, and main.cpp. Now main.cpp is really the heart of your C++ file. And that was the code that we were editing in Xcode. So this is our, our main.cpp file in our Hello World project. So that's what's being represented with this file. Now if you wanted to share these files with any other programmers, if they're working with Xcode and they want the whole project and maybe any other files that are part of your project that go with it, then what you would want to do is to zip up this folder. Now in a Mac environment, to zip this up, you can right click and then choose Compress. And then it creates a zipped file that contains this folder and all of the other contents in it. So then you can easily share this with other people, other developers. So that's a quick overview of how to get started using Xcode for C++ development.